Welcome to this review of the APTX Bluetooth 4.0 receiver board that I bought from Shengman 77 Hong Kong. It's available from other sources as well at about this price uh, typically. I got interested in this module because it states that it supports APTX which is an advanced uh, audio codec suitable for box boombox projects. It as well says here as an application it's for wireless music receivers and uh, it doesn't say anything about the hands-free profile uh, in, that you use with mobile phones for telephony so I thought this might be the perfect board for me for a boombox project. Looking at the overview of the components here from the website a decent Bluetooth module with a CSR Cambridge Silicon radio chip <coughs> a nice driver circuit from TI and as well a regulator to support then a wide range of uh, input supplies. There's an audio input, an audio output and the audio input gets switched in when the Bluetooth module is inactive. Another picture here, a high resolution photograph of the components. Looks all pretty well. Uh, well soldered. A couple of zero ohm resistors uh, are a little bit suspicious here and there are actually two components missing as well so apparently changes were made to the original design of the module. We'll see in the sec uh, measurement section uh, how this affects the performance and we'll get to that in a minute. Welcome to the second part. Uh, in the meantime I've hooked the module up to a power supply, connected it to my phone, a Lumia 820 from Nokia with Windows Phone and uh, as you can see it is now connected with Stimme and Musik which in English means voice and music so this module actually uh, activates as well the telephony phone profile in your phone so when you build it into a boombox and you get a phone call it will actually uh, use the module for the phone call but the other side won't hear you because this does not have any microphone uh, included and in a boombox it would be uh, not easy to integrate a microphone either at least not if you want to use it at high uh, volumes so it has some limitations here when it comes to the practical application okay next part now so uh, you see the module here power supply output cable and it's hooked up just through normal wiring here uh, into first channel of the oscilloscope. I'm driving this from a signal generator app that I got off the Windows Phone uh, App Store. Kick in one kilohertz sine wave and at that point it looks pretty okay. You can crank up the volume a bit further here 25, 26 and you get like 1.5 volts peak-to-peak -peak output which is uh, quite a bit more than uh, you you would get directly from the Bluetooth uh, module that is on this one and helps driving uh, a power amplifier. However, in early testing I thought I was hearing some distortion so what actually happens is visible if, I, if we crank up the volume even, even further here, yeah? 28, and you see it starts clipping on the minus scale. So really the module can't deliver more than 0.8 volts minus on its output the way it came and uh, that means uh, you would be fooled with your volume control in the phone into an area that gives you distortion. That gets even more visible when we look at playing some music over here and this seems to be a, a quiet section of the music anyway. So pretty obvious that something's wrong here. If I change the scale then you see there's much more headroom on the upper end on the positive uh, voltage scale than on the negative voltage scale. I did some analysis of the circuit and where it's actually coming from is that on the circuit the switch components that are here they actually are driven from a one-sided power supply 
and that means these components actually clip the volume, uh, the, the output signal on the minus side. So in the next part I will uh, do some modifications to the module to see if that's really the root cause that is uh, causing the issue. All right, one step further. So now I've modified one of the channels of the module and actually what I did is I took out the zero ohm resistor here that I pointed to earlier and which actually is not shown in some of the pictures uh, on the website. There is a capacitor instead here and another component on this side. Apparently they figured out that doesn't uh, solve the issue. Anyway, I took out the zero ohm con uh, resistor here to disconnect the driver from the switching circuit and uh, connected a wire on that end, so directly on the driver output. And as you can see, again, now there's the uh, lower channel here is the channel that is not modified, the upper one, channel 2, is the channel that is modified. And we're running it into the saturation again. And as you can see now, the issue really comes from the uh, not so well designed uh, switching part of the board. The driver really delivers a uh, nice output here. Actually peak to peak 3 volts at the moment. So it looks like the driver has quite some uh, capability to drive not so sensitive output uh, power amplifiers as well. Which is what I wanted to what is still uh, a potential issue here is, if we switch again to music, now we should be getting lots of drive here. I'll uh, reduce the scale still. Um, it seems that every now and then the module may still at the maximum volume that I'm setting here, it may still run to its limit. But uh, obviously the issue is far better than originally uh, visible here. And that should be controllable in a normal design. Possibly um, you want to change some of the gain of the driver circuit as well by changing some resistors. But I think I'll go with it the way it is. This looks good enough to me and maybe a good uh, basis for my boombox project. I have lost though the second input here, the auxiliary input that was switched to automatically. I'll look into some uh, changes of the board to maybe uh, still support that in a different way. <laughs> 